Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Thursday, March 22. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has informed Parliament that government is 90% complete with the business processes needed to implement the National Identification System, NIDS. Mr. Holness pointed out that a legal working group was to begin the development of the NIDS regulations and said the public education program would be increased in the next two months. Addressing concerns about funding and privacy of the system, he said the majority of the 68 million US dollar loan would be used to improve the state's ICT infrastructure. Jamaica now leads the region in developing its framework to become a digital society. On full implementation, I am sure that the ease of doing business, public order and security, citizen participation, yes. and financial inclusion will all improve. Government's flagship social intervention and support program for youth, HOPE, has received a boost in its funding. In addition to all ministries receiving budgetary allocations to ensure HOPE trainees are engaged, the Development Bank of Jamaica has issued $60 million to increase the program's training and placement across the island. Youth under the HOPE program will also benefit from a $28 million Chase-funded digitization program at the Jamaica Information Service. This project will employ persons from the HOPE program who will be trained in media archive management skills and intellectual property management. This will not only provide our young people with marketable skills, an experience that makes them more employable, but it will open up opportunities for innovation and players in the creative industry to use print and electronic material that will promote Jamaica. The National Security Ministry has given the Jamaica Constabulary Force another 42 motorcycles and 19 motorcars to do its job. The motorcycles, which cost $44 million, will be assigned to the traffic division, while the cars were bought at a cost of $60 million for the criminal investigation branch. That presentation on Tuesday preceded another ceremony on Wednesday, during which the National Security Minister handed over two vehicles to the Guys Hill Police. A new television was also purchased for the station. Because we want to slowly begin to fix up the stations, not only for the community, but also for the officers who serve from the station. At the ceremony, Minister Montague provided an update on the state of public emergency in St. Catherine North, which he said had so far led to 332 persons being detained. We still have 33 persons at Tambourine Farm being detained and being processed, and we have recovered one gun and 10 rounds of ammunition, and the operations continue. Government has given approval for the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, to go ahead with the implementation of the online passport application facility. I submitted a, a, a submission and my colleagues found favor and they have given approval for us to spend US $1.2 million to implement the online application, which again will not only assist our citizens here in Jamaica, but our citizens that are spread right across the world. Whether you are in Australia or you are in Miami, you'll be able to go online and to apply for your passport, whether a renewal or a new passport. The security minister was at Pika's Constant Spring Road offices on Tuesday to present the agency with a new Mitsubishi Rosa bus. The $9.8 million vehicle will be used to take Pika services to citizens in their communities. This unit will go into the hills and valleys, into the communities Rather than the people come to Pika, the, the, the drive is to get Pika to the people. Nurses and teachers have agreed to accept government's offer to pay 5% of retroactive salaries for the 2017-2018 financial year. Finance Minister Audley Shaw made the announcement in Parliament on Wednesday. This payment is being treated as a non-prejudicial advance payment which will in no way compromise our ongoing negotiations, which continue. He has urged the Police Federation to also accept the retroactive payments, which he insists does not bind them to the 16% over four years already agreed to by some public sector unions. And finally, the last sitting of the Grade 6 Achievement Test, GSAT, got off to a smooth start today. Education State Minister Floyd Green visited schools this morning and said the reports from regional officers were positive. 
We do have contingency systems in place, but thus far we've got no report in the system in relation to difficulties, so we do expect a smooth two days of GSA. Minister Green was at the Hope Valley Experimental School, where about 90 students are among 39,000 sitting GSAT island-wide. He had a word of advice for parents whose children completed the first batch of papers today and are prepping for tomorrow. Support them. Don't spend too much time asking them about the exam because you want them to focus on the next set of papers that they have to do. Just remind them that you love them and remind them that you believe in them. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.